Make.com have released a new AI feature that makes it really easy for beginners to integrate AI into their workflows. This feature is only available to invited guests, so log into Make.com and see if a pop-up appears. In a very basic example, I've hooked this into a Google Sheet where it's watching for new roles. I'm passing any prompt to this request anything tool, which is like a chat completion, then I'm dumping the result of that back into the role. So as you see, it's very easy for us to quickly integrate this kind of AI workflow into an automation like this without us having to use external APIs. So it means that we do not have to connect to external services like OpenAI, Claude, Open Router, or anything else. In this video, I'm going to be testing and explaining every single one of these tools to show you what they do and how they work. I'll also be giving my verdict on what I think of these tools overall. Let's get straight into it. So I'm gonna to go to a new module and type make AI, then go down to these make AI tools. Now we have a bunch of different options here up front. Analyze sentiment, request anything, categorize text. I'm gonna just start with request anything and just ask it a basic question from here. So let's get down to brass tacks. What AI model are you? And I'll press save and then click run once. That scenario is running. It says I am based on OpenAI's GPT-3 model. Now it might not actually be because sometimes this happens with AI models where they'll, they might've been trained on other models output, but it says that it's GPT-3. Let's just start off by hooking this up into a very basic automation. So I'm gonna to go to add a module, I'm gonna drag the trigger point down and I'm gonna select Google Sheets and watch new roles. Then I'm just going to search by a new sheet I just put in here. I'm just gonna type prompt and then response in the second column. So prompt and response. Now for search by path, I'm going to select my drive, click here to choose. I've selected my spreadsheet, first sheet name, and then from there I'll just press save. Now I'll select all so that it will process any new records and I'll hook that up. So now whenever we add in a new prompt, so what was our prompt here? What AI model are you? And so instead of adding in and hard coding that text, I'm now going to drag in the prompt, which will be this prompt here, press save. And then after that, I'll just update that existing row. I will enter manually and then select the first spreadsheet from the first module, the sheet from the first module and the row number from the first module. I'll select A to Z as column range. And then finally, I'll just add in the value. So the answer from Make AI Tools, I'll add that into column B here, press save. Right, so now we're going to add in this prompt, which is the exact same prompt we had previously. And I'm gonna just drag this down to give it a bit more space. Now I'm gonna select run once and see what happens. Then it should update the Google Sheet. So it's given us a very similar answer. Let's run this a few times. Let's just select run once. It'll keep running it again and again. Okay, it's run through all of those. I'll select run again because I was only picking up two at a time. Interestingly here, it seems to be caching the responses. So it's given us the exact same response every single time. So that's probably a method for them to save money in the back end. but just keep that in mind. Let's do the same thing where we ask it to pick a random number between one and 10 million or whatever that number is. And we'll ask it to do that three different times. Then I'm gonna go in here, select limit of higher limit so that it will pick up more, select run once, and then it will give us the response for each of those. Okay, it's given us the exact same number two times there. We'll run that again just to see. It's given us the exact same response four times here, so it's likely there's some caching of these prompts going on in the background. I'm just going to ask it another question directly. What company trained you? It says I was developed by OpenAI and Artificial Intelligence Research Organization. It could be using one of the GPT-3 models. It's a bit old at this point. That's not a definite. Often language models might have been trained on the result sets of other language models. Now, okay, let's move on to a different topic. That's request anything. I'm going to add in a new module instead here. So make AI tools and we'll go through the other options that we have. So we have analyze sentiment, evaluates the tone of a text and determines if it's positive, neutral or negative. This is known as the sentiment. So I'm going to get it to return the description of the sentiment. In our module testing here, I'm just going to add in a note on the side of request type, just so we can keep track of which tool we used. So the first one that we used here was request anything. So the request anything is similar enough to just a standard AI call. Now the next one that we're using here is an analyze sentiment. Analyze sentiment, and we'll add in three of these here. So I'm saying give me some text examples of positive, negative and neutral sentiment reviews for a gardening company. It's not a perfect test of sentiment to do this, but at least it will give us a good example. So here's a positive, negative, and neutral one. I'll just add some other ones. I'll just throw in two at the end. It's not too bad and pretty decent. So let's add those all in. Okay, we'll run the tool for all of these. So text to analyze will be the prompt or save. So now in this Google Sheets 
module will go down and the result of this will be the description and the sentiment. So this analyze sentiment comes back with two responses. I'm gonna press save and run this. Now we're running the automation. It's gonna go through each of those and analyze the sentiment. Sentiment is a positive here, negative here, positive. Technically that's probably more of a neutral sentiment, but you see, not too bad, neutral. It was pretty decent, neutral. So look, overall positive, negative, neutral. The sentiment responses were pretty decent. Apart from this one, the company said they did what they would. That borderline could be more of a neutral sentiment. So we'll move down to the next make two. We'll categorize text. Okay, so we'll add a new record type here. Okay, for categorizing the text, an example of this would be you're creating an automation to categorize incoming emails, for example. I asked ChatGPT to come up with some general examples of these. So for categories, you're gonna add some categories in with customer complaints, a general inquiry, and praise and positive feedback. These are three categories, this AI tool is then going to assign our text to those particular categories. Okay, we're going to select the prompt from the spreadsheet, press save, and for updating the row, it's then going to respond with categories and reason. For categories, it's going to respond with an array of categories, it seems, so what we can do is just join those together. I'm going to use a join function, add a separator of a comma at the very end, just in case it comes back with multiple categories, and then I'll just attach the reason to the very end of it. Save again. All right, so I've copied in some text messages into this. Let's run this and see what happens. First off was a customer complaint. Yeah. The second was a general inquiry. Yes. Third was praise and positive feedback. Exactly. So it categorized those pretty well. Again, this is a very basic example, but you understand what we're getting out here. Now let's unlink that. We'll try out the next make module. Identify language. Okay, I've just asked ChatGPT for some test data here. Spanish. In this case, I'm just going to run this straight from this module. So I'm going to unlink those bring that back up. And every time we run once, it's just going to identify that. So I'm gonna press run once, the language Spanish. Yep, yeah, looks good. Next, run once, language French. Okay, you get the idea. These language models are usually pretty good at identifying this. This is a very basic use case. So I'll just move on to the next module here. Extract information from text. Let's move down to this. For extracting the information from the text, we're gonna add in the text. This could be any big block of text. A good example of this would be invoice parsing, for example. We have a more detailed automation on that on our main channel. If you have an incoming automation where it's taken all the text from invoice PDFs, for example, you could dump it in here and then get it to respond with the company name, the total amount, and so on. So let's get ChatGPT to come up with an example of that. So give me a text example of an invoice with relevant company name, amounts, line items, etc. So right now this is in text form. But again, if we were parsing a PDF, we would have it in a text format so that we could dump that in. Okay, we have the billing, line items. So what information will we want to extract from this? Let's just say the invoice number, the invoice date, and the total amount, just for testing purposes. Invoice number, so the module number, this will output to invoice number. The type of that is text, so it can be text, number, or boolean, boolean being true or false. Next up, we will, next we'll add the customer name, or customer company name, let's put that in there. That's a text type as well for a description. Then we want the total amount due. Oops, total amount due. For type, it's arguable. I would use a text for that instead of a number because we want to get the actual currency sign in there as well, just in case it's different currencies. Let's dump in all of the info from this fictitious invoice into here and see what it comes out with. Press save, run that module once. So it has a total text and then information. The result of that, we have invoice number, customer company name, Total amount due. Invoice number is correct. Customer company name is wrong. The customer name is actually John Doe. And the total amount due, 283.50. Yeah, so overall, it actually got that wrong. I'm surprised the AI got that one wrong. It should have been able to figure out that the customer company name was actually under the bill to section here. So that's a questionable response from the AI. Add a module, make AI tools. The next one is standardized text, adjust the style and format. So for example, document written by multiple authors with different styles. So for standardized text, that's a kind of a strange one where it's only one field. I'm just asking ChatGPT, give me an example of five paragraphs with very different styles and formatting. One is regular text, one is JSON, one is XML, one is HTML, one has a lot of emojis. Okay, we have a regular text paragraph like this. JSON format is like so. This is a pretty extreme example now, but let's see what it comes out with here. All right, so we have a bunch of different examples here. Let's just copy all of that out and just gonna get rid of the headings. I'm gonna delimit each of these with these stars just to make it a bit easier for the AI to 
be able to delimit between these. All right, let's move this in. Text is standardized, press save, press run once, and we'll see what it comes out with. Okay, so text is standardized, standardized text. All right, it's not done much. We still have text, we have JSON, we have XML, HTML. It definitely did not do that. We still have text, JSON, XML. I think my example was a little bit too extreme there. A more relevant use case for this is a document written by multiple authors with different styles. So if you had a, a different writing style or tone, maybe one person writes in the first person, the other one writes in the third person. I'm not sure. You can test that for yourself, but that's what the standardized text module is supposed to be about, it seems. Now for Make AI Tools, let's keep going. Summarize text. For this one, I'm gonna take the transcript of this video that we have on our main channel. I'm gonna dump all of that in and then we'll see how it summarizes. Just running that summarized text. That video was around make.com and N8N and doing a quick deep dive into the differences between both platforms. So let's just see the response. Make.com is user friendly with visual interface. The video suggests beginners are low volume. Workflows should start with make.com while developers or advanced users with complex needs may prefer N8N or NN. Overall, the summary of that looks pretty good. It's a basic summary, but it does the job. So this could suit your workflows pretty well. Let's keep moving on to the next tools. We have translate text. I'm just gonna paste in this text and then target language will be Spanish. Press save and we're running that. Okay, that was the text to translate. And on the right hand side, you will see this. If you're a fluent Spanish speaker, then drop a comment below with your opinion on what this translation is like. But overall, AI models tend to be quite good at these kind of translations. So it, I'm expecting it's pretty decent. The last module in this is this advanced AI module, so-called, which is to chunk text. So. This splits text into smaller, more manageable pieces. These are known as chunks. Chunks are used for different purposes. For example, you can use it to reduce the amount of text that you're feeding to a language model. You can use it for creating embeddings for a RAG system, for example. The thing is, this is a more advanced concept. The whole purpose of these Make AI tools is to create super accessible tools for people. So I'm not sure how relevant this will be for people, to be honest. Could be wrong about that. I'm just going to copy and paste this in, text to chunk. Chunk size is the number of tokens to chunk by, I'm gonna just add in 20. One token is usually around three quarters of a word. And then the chunk overlap, let's say 10. The chunk overlap is a bit of a buffer if you want the text to overlap on each side. So that means there will be a bit of duplication between these chunks. I'll press save run once and here we go. We have a bunch of different chunks here. So look, there's a bit of an overlap there. You could feed these into an iterator, for example, and iterate through each of these. So there are a few potential more advanced use cases for this in particular. Although features like this are welcome, I think Make are seriously falling behind in their AI tools. Make still do not have an AI agent feature, for example, and they're losing ground to other tools like N8N as a result of this. So that's these Make AI tools. This essentially replaces the need to call external language models. For example, if you wanted to do the same function of doing text completion or populating responses to prompts like so, you would otherwise have to use OpenAI or Claude or Gemini, for example, and sign up for those external services, add an API key, and then be able to connect from there. So what's my verdict on these tools? Overall, it's always welcome to get more beginner level tools that just make it more accessible for people of all technical levels to be able to integrate AI into their workflows. That said, this is not a groundbreaking announcement by any means. There's a pretty low technical barrier to being able to integrate AI into your workflow currently. For example, you could just sign up to OpenAI, add a few dollars credit, create a new API key, and then simply add in your connection here. Once you've done that, you can use that for practically any workflow. So it's relatively easy to get set up with AI, but keep in mind that there are just a few extra little steps. If you just want to get set up quickly without having to use any other service, this could be a good option. But overall, it seems like it's a pretty basic language model behind the scenes. And so you're probably gonna get a much better result from using an external service. For example, with OpenAI, if you want to tap into the intelligence of state-of-the-art models, then you could use O1, for example, which is a chain of thought module or O3 mini. Here, you're just using whatever basic language model they have behind the scenes. All of these tools are honestly basic. It even says basic AI at the top for all of them, apart from chunking text. Almost everything here would be super easy to prompt directly within OpenAI, even if you have no experience at all with prompting. So the usefulness of this is somewhat questionable. It just 
you know, again, this is for absolute beginners who just want to get up and running. At the moment, it seems like they're only charging for operation costs. So this is a way to save on costs of external APIs. But again, you can use AI APIs for very, very cheap, especially the more basic models such as GPT-40 Mini and Google Gemini's model, for example, which is easy to sign up to, or Open Router gives you access to free models even. Have you used these Make AI tools yet? Let us know in the comments section below. If you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community, where you'll get access to all of our automation templates. You'll get instant access to all of these courses with more on the way. You can get support from us via our live workshops and through our active discussion boards.